This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're speaking about fortuity and why in a liability insurance policy there is always a need for fortuity, that is, an accident. Liability insurance requires the loss or damage that needs defense or indemnity from an insurer must be contingent or unknown at the time the policy was acquired. For insurance to apply on a third-party policy, the risk of loss insured against must be fortuitous. Simply stated, fortuitous means the loss happened by chance. The doctrine of fortuity, accidental or unintended acts causing injury, requires it to be established that the event was a chance event beyond the control of the insurer or the insured. A fortuitous event is defined as, quote, any occurrence or failure to occur which is or is assumed by the parties to be to a substantial extent beyond the control of either party. Thus, the requirement of a fortuitous loss is necessary and an element of insurance policies based on either an accident or an occurrence. The insured has the initial burden of proving that the damage was the result of an accident or occurrence to establish coverage where it would not otherwise exist. Once coverage is established, the insurer bears the burden of proving that an exclusion applies if it wishes to refuse to defend or indemnify. Insurance is designed to protect against unknown fortuitous risks, and fortuity is a requirement of all insurance policies. An insured cannot exist against something that has already begun and which is known to have begun because it is not fortuitous. The fortuity doctrine precludes coverage for two categories of losses, known losses and losses in progress. A known loss has one that the insured knew had occurred before the insured entered into the contract of insurance. A loss in progress involves those situations in which the insured knows or should know of a loss that is ongoing at the time the policy is issued. When a trial court determined that the plaintiff's complaint did not allege any bodily injury or property damage caused by an occurrence, in reaching this conclusion, it relied on decisions of the Kentucky Supreme Court. And in Cincinnati Insurance Company, the Kentucky Supreme Court held that accident and occurrence are unambiguous and that they embody the principle of fortuity inherent in all liability insurance policies. In determining whether an event constitutes an accident, courts must analyze the issue according to the doctrine of a fortuity and determine whether the insured intended the event to occur and whether the event was a chance event beyond the control of the insured. Policy language insuring against accidents applies only if the insured did not intend the event or result to occur. Wisconsin case law, for example, provides several alternative definitions, all of which attempt to capture the fortuity principle central to liability insurance. An accident for purposes of liability insurance is an unexpected, undesirable event or an unforeseen event which is characterized by a lack of intention. Faulty workmanship is not included in the standard definition of property damage, because a failure of workmanship does not involve the fortuity required to constitute an accident. Insurance policies generally require fortuity and thus implicitly exclude coverage for intended or expected harms. New York insurance law, for example, defines insurance contract as, quote, any agreement whereby one party, the insurer, is obligated to confer benefit of pecuniary value upon another party, the insured, dependent upon the happening of a fortuitous event. And a fortuitous event is defined as, quote, any occurrence or failure to occur which is or is assumed by the parties to be 
to a substantial event beyond the control of either party. Thus the requirement of a fortuitous loss is necessary as an element of insurance policies based on either an accident or an occurrence. Fortuity must be judged using a, sub using a subjective standard because requiring this knowledge element best serves the overall principle of insurance law. The crucial issue is whether the insured was aware of an immediate threat of the injury for which it was ultimately held responsible and for which it now seeks coverage, not the insured's awareness of its legal liability for that injury. The term probability indicates the presence of contingency and fortuity, the lack of which is the very essence of the known loss doctrine. Even if there is a probability of loss, there is some insurable risk and the known loss doctrine should not apply. Certainty, on the other hand, refers not to the likelihood of an occurrence, but rather the inevitability of an occurrence. Therefore, a substantially certain loss is one that is not only likely to occur, but is virtually inevitable. The fortuity and accident concepts require that first-party insurance does not protect against losses which are certain to occur, and third-party liability insurance does not protect against non-accidental harm inflicted by the insured. The principle of fortuity is central to the notion of what constitutes insurance. The parties to an insurance agreement in effect wager against the occurrence or non-occurrence of a specified event. The carrier insures against a risk, not a certainty. Given this, courts have recognized that the principle of fortuity can be both an inherent requirement of every insurance contract and a specified requirement reflected in particular terms by the parties, a requirement that loss be accidental in some sense in order to qualify as the occasion for liability of an insurer is implicit when not expressed because of the very nature of insurance. This video was adapted from my book, Insurance Fraudsters Deserve No Quarter, which is available as a paperback, a hardcover, or a Kindle book from Amazon.com with links at the blog. This video is available free on either rumble.com or youtube.com, as well as the blog, which is available free to anyone. If you go to the URL zalma.com slash blog, you can then subscribe to the blog, and you will be notified of all blog postings, usually five, sometimes six a week and have access to the more than 4,700 blog postings. Please tell your friends and colleagues about this blog and the videos and let them subscribe as well. If you're interested in more detail about insurance, insurance law, insurance fraud, and insurance claims, please consider for a very small fee subscribing to my Substack publication. Thank you for your attention.